Hi and welcome to another tutorial for Access users. In this tutorial we're going to start creating the second of our tables for the database and that is the customer table. Now as you can see here from my planning list uh, here are the fields that I'll be putting into the table ID, first name, last name, address which could be the street, uh, house number and street name for example city, postcode or zip code if you like telephone number and the date of birth which might be relevant to a video store. Uh, the only change I made from the original list was that I've split the name into first and last name which is something you would certainly do in a real scenario because it might be useful to sort on the surname for example which you wouldn't be able to do if you had a field that contained the full name. Okay so we'll create the table by clicking the new button on the database window again make sure that tables is highlighted in your object list so new design view is the route that I go down click OK and we have the the design grid open up and as you know you have the three columns field name and data type and the description if you want to add some kind of information about the field and further down we have the uh, the properties which we'll be setting as we work through the table so first field is customer ID and that will be an auto number so as the previous table we're going to use this field as a way of uniquely identifying the record and I'll make no changes in the field properties for this one leave it as it is so I'll come down to field number two and this will be first name tab across I'll leave that as text and I'll leave the properties field size or the text field size as 50 characters but I will change the requirement. Again, I want to make that as a required field, so somebody has to type in the first name, and I will not permit a zero length. So these two fields I'm going to keep the same for most of this table. So it must be it's required, so somebody has to enter something in the field, and I won't allow a blank entry uh, as a valid entry. Okay, so moving down then, we have the last name of our customer. Again leave as text, again leave the characters, so again the only changes is it's required and zero length will be no. Oops, missed that one for some reason. Try again. There we go. Next field is address. Oops. Spell address correctly. And this one I will increase the field size a little bit to uh, maybe 100 characters because I've only got one address line so that could include a primary street and then a secondary street uh, and I'll make that required as well so this time instead of actually clicking the drop down what I'm going to do is highlight the no um, and then just press Y on the keyboard then I'm going to tab down and press the letter N that's just a little tip for you rather than keeping to uh, on clicking and uh, selecting as I was you just uh, use the keyboard shortcut or the, the first letter of the word and it'll set that property okay so we have 100 characters field size required is yes and zero length is no so moving down we have city again I'll leave this one as 50 characters again just highlight the no and required press Y for yes tab down N for no and then click down to my next field and this will be postcode or if you're in the US you can put a zip code in again leave that as text now uh, postcodes in the UK are quite short so I can actually reduce that field size to something like 12 characters that will be more than enough for our postcodes which actually are probably 10, 10 or less in fact but 12 is fine uh, again required I will make that a yes tab down and zero length is no again just click down now to the next field and we have a telephone number now again this is something you could divide up into the area code and the main number I'm just going to combine the two in my field now again because a telephone number is a, is a number you might think well I'll set the maybe the data type to be a number but whenever you do that you have to consider whether or not you'll be doing any calculations on the field if you're not going to do any calculations leave it as text because it doesn't make really any difference and it gives you a bit more uh, flexibility in terms of formatting so you could separate the area code from the main number for example using uh, some field formatting I'm not going to do anything like that but I'm just going to leave it as plain text uh, with no formatting 
um, as you can say, about format and mask options there, which I'll come to in a future tutorial. The field size, I'll reduce it down to 30. Um, hopefully nobody has a number longer than that. And I will make it a requirement. So again, yes, required, tab down, and no for zero length, which I explained in the previous tutorial, if you want to go and have a look at that. And the last one I've got here is date of birth. And obviously, I'm going to set this to be a date and time property. And if we come down to my field properties here, the format I can select by clicking the drop down there. Whoops, catch you there. And I'll just set it to a, uh, what should we have? We'll have a short date. Now you see short date there includes two digits for day, two digits a month, and four digits for year, which is perfect for what I need. On required, I'll set that to yes, so Y for yes. And this time if I tab, I go into a different property called index. Now I'm not going to bother setting the index on it. Again, I explained that in a previous video. It's basically about um, increasing the speed of the searches on your database, which with a typical computer these days probably won't make that much difference on a, on a say, a database with a couple of thousand records. However, um, you'll notice that there is no allow zero length option here. And the reason for that is on a, on a date field, that option simply isn't relevant. So there's nothing to set there. And really, that's my table created. So I'm going to set the primary key. Again, this tells Access which part of the database is the thing that uniquely identifies a record, which, as we know, is the customer ID. So just click anywhere in the customer ID field, click on my little key button there, sets the primary key, then I need to save it, click Save button, and I'm going to call it Customers. There we are. Press Enter, and we're done. And just finally, if I click on the show, uh, the uh, the data sheet view. So there we are, ready to enter the first record. Click into first name, and we'll type in our first customer address. What should we call it? Uh, Fourteen something like that. And city, you're going to put in a made-up city here. Uh, if you've ever read Roy the Rovers, you'll know where Fulchester is. Or maybe not. Um, postcode, again, just make any old thing up there. Telephone number, doesn't really matter. And date of birth, just to tab across to that. And date of birth, we will have uh, 15th of May uh, 79, let's say. Okay, so. 1505-1979. So again, with the date of birth, because I said the format, I just had to enter the basics of the date and access automatically, for example, 79, recognize that it should be 1979 as opposed to 2079, which is useful. Um, and that's it. So there's my first record. I'm going to close that table down. Okay, so we have our first two tables created. So then the last table to create here is this rentals table. Now the uh, the only thing I'm going to leave off this time is the late fee field at the bottom there. I will leave that one out for now and come back to it later on in the project. So um, I'm just going to move that to one side and we will start to create this table. So first thing of course is make sure you have tables highlighted. Always a good idea if you're creating a table in the object list there. Click on new, click on design view, click OK. That's one way of doing it anyway. OK, so let's get started. So first field name is Rental ID. Again, very familiar. I'm going to tab across. And this time it's going to show you a keyboard shortcut. Just If I press the letter A, it puts auto number in for me automatically. I can then tab through to the next field. And the next field is going to be the date of rental. Tab across, and I can type the letter D date again just tab through the next field is going to the movie rented and so here I want to access the list of movie titles from my movies table in the form of a lookup so first things first just tab across into the data type I'm going to click on the drop down this time and choose lookup wizard now the thing I want is already highlighted where it says I want the lookup column to look up the values in a table or query well it's in a table so that's OK. Just click on Next. And those are my two tables that already exist. So I'm going to click on Movies. Click Next again. 
And here are my fields from the movie table, and I can simply click this arrow here to move across the movie ID and the movie title. And that's all I need to put into my lookup column. The movie ID part is important because that's what links the tables together. Okay, so that's the primary key from the movies table which will link to the primary key in the rentals table. So those are my fields, click on next. And here I've got the option to sort the list and I'm going to choose the title. So it'll be sorted alphabetically on the film title. Click on next and there's an example of what I will see. Obviously I only have one film title entered into my movies table so that's all I see here. This thing here, the key column, if I take the tick out of that checkbox there you'll see it pops up the movie ID field. Now I don't really want to see that so it, it is a good idea to hide that key column and it just say recommended there which I agree with. Okay so once that's sorted we click on next again and here we can have a label or a name for the lookup column and I'm just going to leave it as movie rented perfectly okay click on finish and what will happen then is we'll get a warning message from access which tells us that the table must be saved before it can create a relationship so I'm actually going to, I'm going to get two warning messages here the first one is to save the table which is obviously a good idea and the second one will be to say that I haven't actually selected a primary key for this table so it'll go through the process of helping me create both those things or save and then create the primary key so I'll save first and this is going to be the rentals table so I shall type in the table name rentals click OK and here's my second warning which is to say there's no primary key defined and if I say to access OK choose a primary key I'm going to click on yes and if we go back to the rental ID you will see the little key symbol is now indicated on the in the rental ID field name so that is my primary key which is what I wanted anyway if for some reason I didn't want that as a primary key you can simply click in that field name and click on the primary key uh, button and that takes the primary key symbol away and I can choose another field for example date of rental and set that as a primary key if I want so the primary key button here just acts as a switch on and off so I'm going to go back and reset the rental ID as a primary key so just click into rental ID click my primary key button and that's now reset as the primary key okay so moving on to the fourth field and this is going to be the customer field so just type in there the word customer tab across and here we're going to look up information from the customer table so again we're okay for the first part look up information in a table or query that's okay click next again and this time make sure the customers table is highlighted click on next and there we have all the fields available in our customer table and this time I'm going to move across the customer ID the first name and the last name so there's three fields click on next again and here we get the sorting option and I'm going to select last name this time sort it on the uh, customer's last name next again and there's a preview of what I will see when I click on my drop down uh, selector as you will see later on when I go into the table data entry view again there's the key column hidden I can untick if I want to see that but it's not recommended so we will move on and there's the name for my lookup column customer which is perfectly okay I can rename that later on if I want to but that will do for now and click on finish and again access warns me that the table must be saved again before the relationship is created so just say fine to that well, it doesn't say fine you click on yes obviously but I think there should be a button that says fine so we've now linked this table to our other two tables and uh, it will be become clear later on why we've done that and I'm now going to continue with this table and just fill in the rest of the uh, the field so the next one is going to the rental fee for this transaction and that's going to be currency so I can just type the letter C and that brings up currency tab through again uh, the due date is obviously the date the movie should be brought back so that's going to be date again D for date tab through uh, we want to say whether the film was returned or not and this is going to be a yes no field so I press the letter Y on the keyboard brings up yes no and I also want to know the actual date 
it was returned and that will help us work out if there's a late fee due later on so that's going to be a date and time as well and that basically is our table so I'm not going to add the late fee on here as I said so those are all the fields that I need now I haven't at the moment set any properties and I'm going to go through these fields one by one to set the properties the rental ID is fine don't need to change that the date of rental I'm going to make that a uh, what shall I set short date there we go keep it simple um, and I'm also going to put a default value into here and to do that I'm going to type in date and an open and close bracket and what that will do is it'll automatically put in today's date into the field for me so logically if somebody brings up a transaction form for example it's probably going to be for the, the, the current day so just to save the user a bit of time that date can be put in automatically by access okay so I'm not going to bother with validation rules and text but I will say that it's required so yes to that won't bother with the index as I've mentioned before so if we move down to the movie rented which is the link to the uh, movies table it says default value zero then I'm going to delete that so I don't want the zero to appear and I will say it's a required field okay so let's we'll set that to yes and that's all I need to do for that one uh, the customer I will do the same thing so I'll come back and delete the zero that access has put in and I'm going to say it's required as well okay the rental fee the default value is zero at the moment I was going to leave that um, I could leave it at zero but I'm going to delete that and make it blank and I will also say it is a requirement to enter the fee so moving back we have due date as the next field and uh, default value won't bother with that required will be yes and if I come back up actually I need to set the format don't I so the format we're going to set short date again uh, come down to the next field returned yes no I'm going to leave that exactly as it is okay so um, even though it will be required it won't be required until the customer brings back the movie so I can't make it required initially otherwise you won't be able to enter any information on the form for this table and again the return date if I just come back to that final one the format will be the same as previously so short date and this time I won't make it a requirement for the same reason that obviously you can't enter in the return date uh, before the customer takes it away so that will have to be something that is entered later on and you have to trust your staff to enter that information well I have to anyway okay so that's all done I reckon and I'm gonna click on the save button again just to uh, update my saved table click on the data entry view and the first thing you'll notice here is that I've got date of rental already entered now I can now click in the movie rented column and get the drop down arrow click the drop down and there is Star Wars from my movies table it's the only film I've got so I better choose that one click into the customer table click the drop down arrow there's Tom Smith my only customer at the moment so choose that now you'll notice that when I choose that it it although it shows Tom Smith it only puts Tom into the customer field now in reality behind the scenes there's actually a, a reference number in there that we can't see so we see the first name but when we come to set the forms up we will create a, a more friendly way of seeing this information so don't worry about that at the moment the rental fee I will set as 299 for sake of argument to have across to due date now I'm going to set the due date as three days from the original date so I shall put 28th of October in there press the enter key and the last two fields obviously I cannot complete until the customer has returned the film so I will leave those for now so that's it so I can just click away from that record into the next record and that will be automatically saved as you know so just notice one error uh, the rental fee should be 2.99 uh, not 2.96 so I'm just going to click on the highlight the fee there and type in 2.99 enter and there we are we're done just click away again I can now close the table and that essentially is the setup for my database so I now have all three tables and what I'd like to show you here is the relationship between those tables and if on the uh, 
access toolbar, I click the relationships button. That will open the relationships window and you can see here in a graphical display how those tables are linked. So you can see the movies table, the rental table and the customers table and in each of those you can see all the fields scroll up and down display the field names and you can also see here this little line that connects the tables so you can see as I move the rentals field list up and down you can see that line moves because it's linked it's locked onto the customer field in the customers table is locked onto the customer field in the rentals table likewise the movie ID field in the movies table is locked to the movie rented field in the rentals table and again if I scroll up and down there you'll see that line on either side move up and down as it uh, tries to hold on to the linked field so that essentially is a relational database and the purpose of a relational database is to help you organize the information so you can separate the information out into discrete tables so you're not repeatedly entering information so anytime I need to add a movie I go to my movie table anytime I need to add a customer I go to my customer table and anytime I make a rental transaction I use my rentals table which links into the other two hopefully that makes sense and but that that is essentially how our access works um, it can get a lot more complicated it can get a lot more simple if you just use one table for example um, but I do recommend that if you create a database in any real world scenario that you look at the data and think about how you can break that information up into separate tables um, just to make life easier for yourself when you're working with the data later on in forms or reports etc as we will see so I'll close the window down and as you see access says do you want to save changes to the layout and relationships this has got nothing to do with how your database works it's purely this particular view of um, the tables now the reason it says do you want to change the layout is if you imagine that we have maybe six seven even ten tables or more it's not unusual um, it can get a bit chaotic in this view and so you might want to organize your tables in a particular way and access allows you to save that layout so for the sake of uh, this example I will save that layout so just click on yes and it closes that view so that's our tables created and the next step is to create some forms to make the data entry process a bit more friendly for the users so thanks for watching this tutorial I hope you found some things in there that were useful uh, subscribe if you would like to keep up to date with my future tutorials and uh, if you want to make a comment on things you would like to see in future tutorials or questions you might have about this one uh, by all means leave them down below so thanks again and uh, see you next time